Now let's go over strings. Strings are a data type in Java that can be used to store any sequence of characters. Let's look at how you can initialize a string. To begin with, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to use the word string. Notice that it's capitalized, but we're going to use the string. We're going to give it a name, our variable, a name. And then we're going to use the assignment operator with an equal sign. The value that we want to assign to the string, in this case, it's the characters capital J, O, H, N, John, and then a semicolon. This is one way that we can get a string. We're using a string literal. As we discussed, a string literal is any um, set of characters that is inside these two double quotes. The second way to create a string is using the string class constructor. So as you can see, we have the capital S string here. It gives us the type of our variable. A string is a data type, just like int. We have the name of the variable. We'll call it last name. And then we have the assignment operator, an equal sign, new, because remember, a string is an object. Unlike primitives like int, double, boolean, primitives like int, double, and boolean differ from objects like strings in a couple of ways. Uh, most noticeably, you could see that uh, primitives are not capitalized, yet objects are. This is because primitives actually internally store directly store the value that they are assigned. So for example, an integer directly holds a value 5, a double could directly hold a value 3.3, .3, a boolean could directly hold a value true. Instead, objects like strings do not directly hold their value and instead contain a reference to their value. And that's why, since they are objects, we use a new keyword as we would with any other object. Again, we use the class name, and then we could pass in the string as an argument to the string class constructor. It does not matter if you use this method or this method to initialize a string. Uh, it'd be much simpler to use this method, of course, uh, but this method is also valid, and just know that. Now let's move on to concatenation. Let's say that right here, since we have a first name, John, and we have a last name, Doe, one can bind these into a full name of this person. How would we do that? Well, as you can see, this is pretty standard. We're saying that this is a string object, uh, and then it has variable name, full name, and equal sign. And then what we're doing here kind of looks like an expression, right? We, we're using the uh, plus sign, uh, almost like an operator. So we have first name plus, right here, what seems to be a space in double quotes, and plus, and then the variable last name. What is this doing? You can think of any time you see a string, a plus, and then any other series of strings and pluses, what's basically occurring is concatenation. Concatenation is when you can combine multiple strings. Let's substitute each variable name here with their actual value that they store. Since first name stores John, then we have this plus uh, space between double quotes, another plus, and then the last name, which is Do. Concatenation combines each of these strings. So in the end, you would have John, a space, and then Do. Using concatenation, we can combine multiple strings to create one large string. And then if we wanted to, we can even store this string in a string object, in this case, we call it full name. Concatenation is very useful if you want to uh, combine uh, different sorts of uh, strings with one another. Um, and if we want to, as we saw, um, uh, represent individual sets of data together. Now let's move on to the last topic in strings, which are ex escape sequences. As you may notice, a string literal, right, which is anything enclosed between these double quotes, uh, let's say that you wanted to write uh, the sentence, um, Joe said, hi there. Notice that these two double quotes are what denote a string literal, but then notice that I also have other double quotes. These two double quotes are not being used uh, to signify anything to Java, 
uh, they're just being used in my string since I want to show dialogue with these two double quotes. The problem is that this is not going to work. Java is going to get confused when it sees a set of double quotes here and a set of double quotes here. It's not going to know what to do. And the program is going to yield an error. So how do we fix this? Well, we'd want to escape. The keyword is escape. We want to create an escape sequence in order to escape the string. It's basically a way to tell Java to uh, ignore these the, the double quotes that are escaped and not count them uh, as endings or beginnings of a string literal. If you want to escape a character, such as this one, you use the backslash. So by putting two backslashes before the double quotes, it tells Java to ignore the double quotes. There are other ways that we can use escape sequences. For example, whenever you see a backslash n anywhere, this is a shorthand for a new line. So just for practice, this string literal, which contains a new line, and let's see what it's going to output. So we have, we're trying to do a system.out.println of this string. Well, to begin with, we can see that we have three escape sequences. So we're escaping a double, pair of double quotes, then we have a new line, and then we have, we're escaping another pair of double quotes. Well, we have a double quote, hello, then notice we have this new line here. This is going to move the cursor to the next line. It's basically internally the same thing that Java does to move the cursor to the next line in system.out.println. Essentially, system.out.println is identical to system.out.print, not print ln, print any set of characters, and then in the end you use a backslash n. That's basically the same as if you were to system.out.println. So system.out.println moves the cursor to the next line. So in a similar fashion, if we have this backslash n here, we're going to move the cursor to the next line. So it's not, we're not going to continue right here. At this location, we're going to continue right here. We write the characters there, an exclamation point, and then we're escaping another pair of double quotes. So double quotes. So this statement right here would output this.